What's going on guys? So I've had this table saw for over a year now. I've had some things I wanted to say about it, but I wasn't exactly sure how to do it. Uh, my best performing video to date is a review of my old table saw. And it's no wonder that video got a lot of views. If you have about $600 to spend on a table saw, that saw is a no brainer. Uh, this saw, however, is an entry level sliding table saw, at least for the US market. And they are about $4,500. So I don't think a lot of people are gonna be buying this saw. That said, there's a lot of cabinet shops in the United States that go out of business, people retire, and you find these things for sale on Facebook Marketplace all the time for half of that or less. I've seen some really good deals and that's actually how I got mine. So if you ever do want one of these, Watch Facebook, Mar Facebook Marketplace, you'll see one in your area. So what possessed me to buy this? The main reason, well, first off, I had the money, it became available. That's a big reason. But the sliding table saw, the benefit is, is workflow. So with a traditional cabinet saw, your workflow is this, or at least this was mine before I got this saw, you get your plywood or your big piece of hardwood, you rough cut it to length. And in my case, that was with a track saw um, on the ground, if it was a piece of plywood or a track saw on a table, if it was hardwood. So I'd cut that eight foot board to something manageable. I'd join it. Then I would take the track saw and I would get a straight edge. I would rip it to a rough dimension, and then I'll get out the crosscut sled, put that on my table saw, crosscut, rough dimensions. I might rejoint, replane, re-rip to final dimensions, re-crosscut to final dimensions. The main snag for me in that process was constantly pulling out the crosscut sled every time I needed it. You're repeating that process of pulling out the crosscut sled ripping, cross-cutting, final dimensions, rough dimensions. So I started thinking about getting a sliding table saw because the workflow for that is, it's similar, but you can break down a full sheet of plywood on this. It's not easy, but it's definitely doable and it's how I, how I do it. I put full sheets on here and cut them to rough dimensions and then cut everything to final dimensions right here on this saw for hardwoods I will take a full eight foot board and I'll rough cross cut it right here before I join it the next thing is I'll take it to the joiner and I'll join an edge and then I can take the hardwood clamp it down to the table run it through the sliding table and get a straight edge and then I can rip and then I can cross cut all on this saw without any special attachments so that's the benefit so like i said this is your entry level when you pay more you get a lot of additional features you get a higher quality you get bigger capacity like i said i can break down a full sheet of plywood width wise i can't run eight foot sheets on this you do get that benefit when you upgrade from this so let me take you around this saw and show you some of the features. These will be pretty typical on all sliding table saws. All right, so let's start with the cross cut fence. You'll find this mounted on the front and sometimes people will mount it on the back and they'll push their work through. When I first was looking at these, I wasn't sure why people put the crosscut fence on the front, but it's actually much easier to hold your work down and push it through when it's up here. So first things first, the stop blocks are great. You've got your measurements on here. I mean, and you know, you can make your crosscut fence do all this, but it's built in. There's an extension so you can bring this out. Also, you have, you know, about 20 inches here. There's an extension that sits right here. 
so you can put you know a full sheet of plywood or whatever on the saw so this is currently set up at 90 degrees to the blade this will this fence will rotate and so you can do angled cuts. I almost never do that. And the reason why, and this might be unique to this saw, I'm not sure, is it's difficult to re-zero. Well, it's not difficult, but it takes some effort to re-zero your fence and line everything up to the blade after you put it back to 90. So I leave this always locked at 90. If I want to do angled cuts, there's another piece for that I'll show you in a minute. Angle your blade. Now the blade angles towards the fence, which is a little different than cabinet saws. So you turn everything on back here. Everything uses uh, these sty style switches. So if you do adjust your crosscut fence, there's these stops right here to put you right back at 90. And I found this always works, actually. I haven't had to adjust this. The saw comes with this little fence back here. Maybe you can call it like a miter gauge, sort of. But this is what I use for cutting angles. And it has this for holding down your work piece. So that's the reason I never really adjust my crosscut fence. This comes in and out pretty easily. These tracks I also use for this little jig I made for cutting small pieces. This way I can clamp, you know, tiny little bits and process them through without having to have my hand up on the blade. Another thing that's different about a sliding table saw is this. This is how you change the blades. This may seem like a small thing, but it's actually not. Changing the blade, I've never liked doing it on a normal cabinet saw, but this makes it very easy. I can get my hands right in here. This little blade here, this is a scoring blade, and when you're processing plywood, you can raise and lower this blade to score your piece before it goes through the main blade, which prevents a lot of tear out. Rip fence you'll find is generally this style, which is different than you'll find on most cabinet saws. I didn't know how to feel about it at first. I like it uh, just as well as anything else. It just takes a little while to get used to. So the fence will come out and you can put it you can put it vertical for working with taller stuff and it doesn't move quite as smooth as some table saw fences but i find this thing's totally fine i've never had any issues with it and it'll come right off the end of the saw something else you'll find with this type of saw is the wings usually pretty big this one goes out to 39 inches and there's kind of an outfeed wing right there. That's pretty standard. You'll see on most of these style saws. Here's the adjustment, the up and down adjustment, and you'll find these stops in different places for this one's over here, I guess for when you're ripping on this side. You can just bump it with your knee. Um, so um, I don't think I need to say to list the advantages. I think they're obvious. It's much faster and you can process bigger stuff with this saw. Let me talk about disadvantages because there are some that may not be quite obvious. Well, let me just point out the most obvious one, the size. This saw is massive. So at a minimum, you need 96 inches in width. So about 145 inches. You're gonna need front to back at a minimum. So it's a lot of space, about 100 by 150 inches is what you need at a minimum. So that's a big disadvantage, that's huge. And the biggest 
complaint I have, if, it, if you can even call it a complaint, is it, it's kind of awkward to rip. And the reason is, it's the position of this table, of the slider. So you can stand here, way back here, because even if you move the table up, the support for the table is way back here, the slider. So you stand way back here, that doesn't feel right. Or you can stand over here, which is generally what I do. See, it's a little awkward. Also, if you're working with really long pieces, you'll have to move this fence out of the way because your off cut will end up hitting it. All right, so that's it. If you guys have any questions about this saw, drop them in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.